All right, so today we're going to adjust the valves. Um, it says we can take the fuel tank off, the right side ignition coil, and a few other things we'll get to. Let's get started. I was doing a little research on cameras and I found out that a lot of these motorcycles have uh, JIS type screws. They look a lot like Phillips, um, but when you can zoom in here, you can see that this guy has a little dot. I'll point it out to you here. It's right, right, right there. I got my needle in it right there. Um, and that little dot uh, represents JIS. JIS. Um, which is a little bit different than Phillips. Uh, Phillips, you know, kind of a wedge on them. Uh, so when you twist, they wedge out and strip you to than JIS. Um, JIS do not have a wedge, they're straight cut. Um, there's a lot of videos on it, um, you can look it up, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to get me a set of JIS um, screwdrivers because it looks like a lot of these screws are JIS. Um, so yeah, just a heads up. And that, they're probably number twos, it looks like. They're pretty close to number two, Phillips, so. Um, probably get number one, number two, just to be safe, but. Just a little tip for you. Upper fairing, don't worry about the fairings. Fuel tank, remove. Right hand ignition coil, did that. Um, cylinder head cover, and alternator cover, upper and center plugs. All right, so I think the center one they're talking about is this guy here. I uh, got a big washer and pliers. So let me take that guy off. And then um, the upper one. It might just be this guy. I think this is a 3 8 washer, by the way. Looks pretty, uh, pretty decent. Not bad. Yeah, there might be marks or something in there that kind of tell you what's top dead center and stuff, I'm not sure, we'll see. Alright, so I'll take this, uh, this other plug wire out, and then got a long extension and a wobbly extension, these are 10 millimeter Okay, so I think I missed a pretty key step. This uh, kind of brass looking thing, steel, um, I'm not sure what material that is, but uh, the fitting that, that um, hooks on this, uh, uh, the coolant hose here, I think this is held on by the head cover. And so, see this tab that comes out here? There's another flange on this piece that kind of um, seats it. So I think that piece comes out. And I missed in the instructions where it said to drain the coolant. So I tried to take a bunch of stuff off. I don't think I had to take off. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go and drain the coolant and then try to pop that out. Cause I think that's how you get it off. All right. I'm not sure, but I'm guessing this is the uh, coolant drain plug. Come on, coolant. A little bit of coolant. What happens if I open this guy? Oops. All right. Ah. Yep, that was the right one. I'm gonna hand tighten those uh, cover screws back on. I'm doing this so that when I take the hose off, I hopefully won't get any coolant inside the head. Okay, then I'm gonna try to take this guy out. Okay, got that 
guy popped off. Next, I cleaned up any spilt coolant and proceeded to remove the head cover again. Next, there was a lot of working with that coolant fitting to get it to finally come off. I had to remove the top hose clamp as well and rotate the um, hose that connected to that coolant fitting. All right, so I'm not sure if that, if that did it, but I did have to turn it, and then she popped off. I think she just needs a little coercion. All right, there's these two gaskets. Make sure they're in place. Um, this main gasket, of course, I don't think I moved it much. A tiny bit of like radiator rust got in on the gasket. Hopefully that's okay. I might clean that up a little bit. All right, so um, show you guys what I'm doing here. I'm turning the crank here with this guy and I'm gonna line up where it says 1T and that's gonna be top set dead center on the left side. So it says go until they, uh, till the, the valves are moving downwards and then we're turning upwards. I think the big deal is making sure that the cam lobes aren't uh, pointing down towards the rockers so that they actually lift the valves up off the seat. The top dead center location is what the factory recommends, but I really don't think, as long as they're not touching, the, the rockers aren't engaged with the cam lobes. Um, that's kind of the philosophy I use when I, when I check all of the valves. So take that for what's worth. Now I'm going to check the clearance on these valves. It says the intake side, they list it in millimeters, which is 0.08 to 0.31 millimeters, which is the same as 0.0031 inches to 0.005 inches. And so on the intake side, I'm going to do four um, thousandths, which is 0.004 inches. Because I have a... Yeah, that's the type of feeler good you have. Okay, five doesn't want to fit there. Let's try four. It's still being spec. Four fits. So that's good. Let's try the other side. I'm actually gonna take this guy out so it's easier. Okay, so let's try this other side. The other cam lobe on the same cylinder. Yep, and it fits with the four easily with the four. Okay, let's do the uh, exhaust. Yep, five fits in the exhaust. The inner exhaust is a little bit trickier. So I got the five here. Does not seem to want to fit. Okay, so I'm gonna have to adjust that one. Okay, so here you can see the adjusters. Um, that adjusts the spacing between the cam lobe and the rock arm. Um, what you do is this nut, you loosen this nut. Um, it's a nine millimeter socket loosens it and then you turn these out to gain more clearance. 
So I've already loosened this back side here, the exhaust, um, the inside exhaust valve was a little bit tight. Um, I, I really had to force the five mil the, or the five thousandths inch in there. And so now I'm going to just slight, ever so slightly loosen it. It does say if you're adjusting the valves that you're supposed to remove the radiator and stuff, but I'm gonna try to avoid that if possible. Probably just is about 90 degrees, so uh, I will like loosely tighten that. These guys don't need to be tightened very much at all. The lock nut should be tightened to 13 foot pounds. Tighten my lock nut to get a good feel. Five should go, but six shouldn't go, or it should be really tough. Making sure that my lobe on the back side is not engaged. So that's pretty easy, so let's see this. All right, so I tried six, and it's a little bit looser than I'd like. So I'm going to re-loosen it, re-loosen the lock nut, and tighten it up just a little bit. So this is a pretty tedious process. There's a lot of adjusting, measure, adjusting, measure. One thing that kind of helps is if you don't over loosen the lock nut, because when you loosen and tighten the lock nut, it can slightly affect the, um, the position of the screw. So just be aware of that when you're adjusting it. For a casket, though I probably never sell amounts massive. I will always try to give you something classic, and that's real, even if I'm dead broke. And I'll always be the first to the end, so I do what Six doesn't want to go. Five goes. Good. Now I'll keep going with all of them, and we'll be good to go. Be buried and lay in the dirt My man for what it's worth I try to put everybody that I love first Don't let me get carried away So I don't get carried away To be buried and lay in the dirt My man for what it's worth I try to put everybody that I love first Don't let me get carried away So I don't get carried away Don't let me get carried away So I don't get carried away Don't let me get carried away So I don't get carried away okay. So at this point, I have adjusted all the valves where I want them, and right now I'm using the like four thousandths and five thousandths intake or uh, four thousandths and five thousandths feeler gauges as the go no go gauge. Um, so I'm trying to get it right at the middle of the range there, so that for the intake, the four thousandths fit, but the five thousandths is too big. Um, I like where that's sitting, and then for the exhaust, the exhaust and the intake, uh, for the exhaust I'm using 5 thousandths and 6 thousandths as um, go no go gauges. I'm trying to keep things clean, it is difficult when I'm working outside. I wish it was a closed shop so I didn't get anything in the, uh, in the head here, but uh, yeah, I'm just trying to be as careful as I can. So I'm going to go ahead and double check all of my clearances. Make sure that I tightened my lock nuts on um, the, I guess, the rocker, the rocker arm adjustment. So if I tighten all those, I don't want one to be loose. Um, even though I, you know, I should have tightened them all because I only checked them after they were tight. But I'm just gonna double check everything, and then we'll put her back together in reverse order.
The head cover bolt should be tightened to 7.2 foot pounds. All right, so we're gonna open the radiator system, coolant system, uh, fill it up as much as she'll go with coolant, and then I'll leave that open so we can kind of bleed it before I start it. One thing I want to note is that, you know, as soon as I turned the bike on, uh, the coolant, you know, started to circulate at drop level, but then it didn't go down. Um, I'll make sure it doesn't get hot. You know, it's kind of a learning process. I think that's how you bleed it because this is, it seems like it's the highest point in the system. Just leave that open. Um, anyways, she sounds good. That's all I get. Just an update on how the bike's running since this valve adjustment was done. Um, I actually had to resync the carburetors because I lost some footage on that video. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. But I think that um, I, when I balance the carbs after the valve um, clearance adjustment, um, that the bike is running a lot better. I think that all my carb settings might still need some adjustment, but other than that, I'm pretty happy on how it's running. Thanks for watching. On our next video, we're going to jump to another project vehicle, so stay tuned for that.